guys. How are you? Nighttime edition of quarantine. Uh, tonight we are going to, well, I am going to be joined by Barbara Shett. Um, and if you guys don't know Barbara, Barbara is uh, the number uno on Eurosport uh, during the Grand Slams. And so she's just requested to come on and we're going to talk about our quarantines. So hold on. Now, it's the Bubsy and Stubsy show tonight. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Hey, hey. Oh, hey, hey, Bubsy. Yes, the two of us, we're locked up, aren't we? We are locked up. We are locked up in uh, different hotels in Australia. <laughs> different I don't know states. Why, 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 why are you frozen? I don't know. You've got a funny look on your face. Uh, am I still frozen? Yeah, you, you go like this. Oh, no, you're back. I don't know. Get Am into a better position. Wait, Get into a better posse. Mm, no, I don't know. You're still frozen. Wait, let me turn Oh, off. there you go. So oh. I'll turn off some of my other devices. Mm, that would help. Maybe that helps. I haven't done this for a long time. Sorry. Don't give me mm -hmm. a hard time just yet. I'm fragile. I'm in quarantine, okay? Oh, <laughs> so, so a few Europeans joining us too. So we've got all the people from Europe on right now because they know you, Bubsy, from Eurosport. And yeah. uh, there's my friend Rob Delu. So we've got a, a bunch of Aussies on as well. Rob sent me a care package today. Uh, you're still oh. frozen again. I don't know what's wrong with you. Um, it's I mean, frozen. I know. No, you don't have a freezer. You don't have a microwave. You don't have anything. I no? don't have a microwave. I have a fridge. I have a fr fr freezer. And I said, you have you're a freezer. Frozen. I don't have a freezer. That's I have a freezer in my fridge. How do you not have a freezer in your fridge? I don't have a freezer in my fridge. Can you believe it? I have this the tiniest fridge ever. So I stuff everything in there. What I've ordered from Woolies, basically, and what people have dropped, friends have dropped. And I'm surrounded by food. Which hi, Casey. Casey's on. Casey's on. Hey, Casey. Yeah, hi, Case. <laughs> Casey. Well, so we've got half of Australia and half of Europe on. So... I don't know why you keep fr freezing, but I think, Bobsy, now that you're on, um, yeah. and for the sake of everybody, I think that I should just pick up my phone here a little bit and get my, pour myself a little red wine because I think that's what we should do while we're talking. You, um, have, you, have, you, you, you honestly have red wine. I am a no, no alcohol for these two weeks of quarantine because uh, I don't think it's good when you, well, when you, I'm really when you have alcohol in your room. I'm really proud of you, but uh, my girlfriend, Eden, uh, sent me this on the first day and I said I didn't want to drink while I was in quarantine, but then it was sent to me and I thought, well, now I should drink because... So you still it's, have yeah. it. That's amazing. You got it sent to on the first day and it's you haven't opened it. No, I haven't opened it, although I've had a beer, a couple of beers. Um, those are on the wall because I'm my whole... Uh, my thought process here is I'm going to do 14 bottles of beer on the wall. <laughs> See, there's people out there. There's one way you can quarantine, and then there's another way you can quarantine. So Stab is clearly drinking her way through quarantine there, and uh, I'm not because. Now uh, I need you to go to a different place in your room because you keep freezing. So no, I don't know no, 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 no. People, people, people. Do I freeze? I only freeze for you. Maybe it's well, you I don't actually. know, but we people say uh, if uh, that Bubsy's freezing or not because Am I, for me, do for I me, freeze? I'm getting this roundy, 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 roundy thing going. Yeah, yeah. But so I poured, my, I poured myself a drink, and um, we're getting is you're still frozen. You, you've got a lovely smile on your face, though. So, so no, 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 no. But see, people say I'm not freezing at all. So it's just all right. Well, good. Then don't relax. worry about it. Cheers. Then don't worry about it. cheers. Um, so, Bubsy, you have been in quarantine for how long? Yes. So, this is, hey, Stubsy, just relax. This is a conversation. This is not an interview, okay? So, we just have, have a chat like we always do. So, Stubsy and I, we have been talking on the phone every day. And today, we mm -hmm. thought, oh, let's just do an Insta Live and uh, share our experiences. Yeah. Um, somebody from Canada just tuned in. Cheers, Bubs. Yeah, I'm cheesing with uh, water, which is pretty sad. So I'm in Brizzy in Brisbane. I am on day 11 of my quarantine, and it's just unbelievable. I mean, you're stuck in the room the whole time. No, I shouldn't say the whole time because out of the 24 hours, I'm actually allowed out for half an hour a day to get a little bit of fresh air. Stubsy's not because she's in Sydney and in other states – 
Um, I think uh, except Queensland, you're not out. You can't. You're not allowed out, and you can't open your windows. Did you try to open your window yet? Uh, no, because I can't. It's impossible. It's, it's actually sealed. You don't like, have any the, tools or anything. The only way for me to get out of this window, well, I don't even think I could smash it. To be quite honest, uh, it's really thick. So yeah. my window is the good thing about my window. If I turn it around here, is that it's really big. Yeah, that's good. It's really big. And so I don't feel super claustrophobic, which is nice. Um, and you've got some sun coming in during the day. Yep. Uh, so good. in the afternoon, I get a beautiful sunset. Uh, it goes behind the buildings, but I do get beautiful Jordana. sun. In the afternoon. Jordana's on. Yes. She's Hello, on. Jordana. <laughs> yes. She's um, a Queenslander. That's right. She, she is a Queenslander. She is definitely a Queenslander. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I get a beautiful little sunset in the afternoon. So I sit on my chair here and I get the sun coming in. I read or I am watching. Um, I'm currently watching um, the Nicole Kidman movie uh, series called The Undoing. Have you started is, watching it? No, I haven't. Is it good? Mm -hmm. I was really? going to not start it because it's not finished. So I'm going to have to wait oh. a week at the end. Yeah. Um, but and we I know am... that Stubbsy is uh, not a very patient person. <laughs> I think Neither that's am I. I was going to say, I. coming from you. Yeah. So, um, so, <laughs> so, so most you... impatient people are stuck in quarantine. Can you believe it? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. So when Bubsy and I see each other, um, because obviously everybody in the tennis world knows me as Stubbsy and everyone knows Barbara as Bubsy. So we scream at each other when we first see each other and we just say <laughs> Bubsy and then I, I, I say Bubsy and she screams Stubbsy and then her poor husband, Josh, who I played mixed doubles with once or twice. You did. Um, just goes, Jesus Gets Christ. Gets embarrassed because we, yes, we are really loud, aren't we? We, we are very but loud. That's all right, you know, yeah, people yeah. Have, to, have to hear us. So, yeah, so um, people, I think, don't understand, especially in Europe, and I'm, I don't know, you just um, flew in from the States, how, how harsh uh, things are with restrictions and with this quarantine here in Australia. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? And, and the hotel we're staying, I mean, you ha we have to pay that ourselves as well. This is not covered by the government or anything like that. So we mm -hmm. have to pay um, this fee ourselves. And literally, I mean, if you guys imagine 14 days in, in one room, it's, uh, it's quite tough. How's you, how are you doing? Um, are you getting these phone calls every day where they ask you, oh, how are you doing? Do you need some psychological help and, and stuff like that? Which is good, but I mean, we do anyway, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because the first day they called, I was like, hello. And they're like, hi, is this Renee? And I said, yes. And they said, how are you going? And I said, fine. So they, are you having, um, you know, uh, mentally, how are you doing? I was like, well, honey, <laughs> you should have called me before I got in here because... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but now that I'm in the room, I'm safe. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so every day they call you, they check on you uh, physically. So they'll ask you, I don't know if they did that in Brizzy, but every day they call and they say, how they are you do. doing? Are you feeling any symptoms? You got any cough, sore throat, runny nose, uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, how's your chest? And I'm like, well, my chest is still small, but it's got, I'm fine. My lungs are fine. Uh, so, <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, they really, uh, they check on you. Um, I, I told everybody today that you get knocks on the door, random knocks on the door, and it's th only three things can happen when you get knocks on the door. It's one, only food, isn't it? One, you're getting food. Yeah. Two, you're getting a package from friends, like That's I did true. Say, from my friend Rob, which was pretty much just to clean my teeth. And <laughs> the third one is COVID tests. So the yeah, only time the right. door knocks. So when it knocks, you're like, what? What's happening? Something's uh, happening in your boring life in these two weeks, which is quite exciting when, when it knocks, uh, when, the, when they knock on your door. And you get tested twice. I had my last test yesterday, which is good. I did think that they were picking a few brain, you know, so a few things out of my brain because they were uh, pulling up so far with that little stick. Disgusting. I will, really I will tell you, it was oh. like if they shoved this knife up my nose. But the thing that interests me, this was the most comprehensive Corona test that I've done. And I've done about 20 or oh, probably mm. even more. So with the tests they do here in Australia, in your throat, up your nose, up yeah. your nose. Yeah. So three crevices. Get they cover it all. They cover it all. Violated. And, <laughs> and you get, oh, bonjour, Aurelia. We have somebody from Paris as well. Um, and, bonjour. Uh, yeah. 
you get the you get the results um, by the end of the day. I don't know if it's the same in Sydney. Is that the same? You get a text. So did message? they call you and tell you that? No, you were I got a text. I got a text message that I was negative uh, the same day twice. You? Oh, so that's so interesting. So for me, they said we will only contact you if you're positive. Right. Okay. So they haven't contacted you clearly. No, but I think that's really shit i think yeah, they should, they should either you. way they should just send you a notification i think or a message or something like that hey somebody's yeah. asking was asking us here if we're still playing on the seniors tour well <laughs> nothing's happening at the moment so the seniors are the first which are cut and there is no such thing as a seniors tour um there's um, invitational doubles there's exhibitions and stuff like that but there's no seniors tour but we have never played together have we I know we haven't. We should request to play together. The thing is, the problem with us playing together is that um, we would laugh way too much. And, <laughs> and you would get angry if I would miss a shot. That's the, that, that you, the my worry. Yeah. You have played, how many times have you played against me? Am I seriously that serious? Other I than have my diving? played, well, in, in, um, in your real career, you were quite intense on the court. I have totally. to say. Totally. <laughs> yes. 100%. And now you're very relaxed, yes. You I was, but I will admit freely that I was psycho when I played on tour. <laughs> a little bit. Um, <laughs> but I did leave it all on the court, but I usually, after about an hour, I was fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah I mean, with you, with you anyway, maybe not with other people, but overall. No, with me, with me, I just knew that, in, I mean, it didn't happen very often, but maybe a couple of times I've beaten you maybe in doubles, you know, it didn't, didn't happen very often, but I knew that I had to just leave you, leave you and wait until she comes. And then, you know, we give each other a hug and then it was all good again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thankfully I didn't lose to you that much, but. Uh, no, you didn't. Have, Don't worry. You, well, one time I do remember is when uh, we lost to you in our deciding doubles match in Austria. It was me and Alicia uh, lost to you and. Was it Barbara, Barbara Schwartz? Barbara Schwartz. Schwartz. Yeah. I mean, she's not the Barbara greatest. She was the greatest Fed Cup player in the history of the world. She sure was. She sure she was. Never yes, lost I can't match. even remember that. No, no, there were a few more times. Few that more was times. in. Uh, that was uh, where in Klagenfurt. Was Klagenfurt. That's Klagenfurt. Right. Beautiful Listen. spot, people. If you ever want to go on a holiday to a nice, a nice lake, go to Klagenfurt. They have plenty of lakes, drink water quality, beautiful. They have mountains, they have everything there. So. Yes, I, I, it was beautiful, except it sucked because we lost. Although we were up to love. You were up to love. That's right. Let me tell you what happened. I don't know if I've told you this, but we were up to zero and we were just like, woohoo, with dinner that night. We were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're so you got cocky. Yeah. Totally got cocky. And then you brought out the big gun of Barbara Schwartz <laughs> and she totally <laughs> took out Yelena Dokic, who was very good at Fed Cup and... And then Alicia lost, and she, Alicia wasn't very good at that point. She, she wasn't quite at her, like, you know, doing really well. What she do you mean? Young. I beat Alicia that day. What are you talking about? Well, exactly. <laughs> so you, who were probably, like, top 15 in the world at the time, Alicia was terrible on clay at that point. Yes, she was. Um, and so, you know, uh, Barbara Schwartz, once again, just came out and, like, she was the difference maker. Um, but one match that I remember um, was when Lisa and I played you and Anki Huber in Miami. Would you like yeah, to talk about that? Can we, can we not talk about that, please? Speaking of alcohol. <laughs> okay. Hello. What was your favorite Grand Slam and your favorite surfer for you both to change the subject? We said certain topics we're not touching, okay? So just, just <laughs> take a pill pill. <laughs> we might have... Okay, just to sum it up, in Miami when we played against you and Lisa... We might have not, Anki and I might have not slept the whole night. <laughs> <laughs> we were more focused on singles and it was a quick match. We lost. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, do, I, I think Lisa actually shook one of your hands. I don't know if it was you or Anke and just said, uh, are you guys still drunk? Uh, <laughs> or no, she said, no, she said, she said, did you guys go out last night? Yeah, and you I were like, so. mm, yeah, we did. Maybe. It was like, I think it was like one and one in like 35 minutes and 40, it's like a hundred degree heat in Florida. <laughs> yeah. It um, was too hot to play that day. Yeah. Yeah. So someone said, hello, what is your favorite grand slam and your favorite surface for both? Well, I can say my favorite, well, it's hard to pick a favorite grand slam, um, but I would say Wimbledon for me and closely, a runner-up would be the Australian Open just because it's my home Grand Slam. And my favourite surface would definitely be grass. Yeah. Bubsy? 
Yeah, mine, uh, my favorite surface was always clay because I've grown up on clay, obviously. I didn't mind hard courts, but uh, maybe not, not, not too much of the grass. And as you said, I mean, my favorite Grand Slam was always the Australian Open for some, for some reason. Because uh, it's just oh, so relaxed. Oh, that's why you married an Aussie. People, yeah, that's probably why. And people are just so relaxed. But all, as you said, all the Grand Slams are so beautiful in um, different ways. And they're very, uh, very different. Um, and I, I love them all. I mean, I, I think now that uh, we are retired for such a long time, we, uh, we probably enjoy, I look at them differently as well. When you're a player, you just go there and you play and you practice and everything. And now we embrace certain things uh, not just um, the tournament itself but where it's played you know melbourne as a city paris as a city uh you new york you live in new york and um it's um yeah it's interesting you guys should all go to a grand slam event to all four of them yeah. once they're back i would on. suggest definitely going to all four uh, if i had my choice you know europeans is a long way to go to australia but it's definitely worth it in winter and in the States, outside of, a, outside of a Grand Slam, I would definitely say to go and uh, if you really love tennis, go and watch Indian Wells. Yeah, yeah. It's by far the best tournament of the year outside of it a Grand is. Slam. And it's just so beautiful out there. And uh, I would guess in Europe, I would say in Europe, if you had to go to a tournament, uh, Rome, Rome um, would probably be the one, just because you get back to back with the men and women as well, so you might be able to overlap. Um, yeah. Someone asked Bubsy. Uh, what it was like facing Serena in singles. Whoops. <laughs> Not so much fun. I've played against her. I, I can't even remember. It's funny because I don't remember most of the most of the, my matches, but I played her a few times. I think the best uh, result was uh, uh, that I won a set because then she was already, I think, top five or even number one or something. Good. And um, it was just um, really overwhelming for me to play against her because she took so much time away from me so i could only react and i didn't like that so um mm -hmm. i've never i've never beaten her beats uh, venus once when she was number two but uh i've never scored a win never scored a win against serena never afgets afgets mensch afgets yes afgets you still speak a little bit of german don't you i'm busy i'm how come well i listen to steffi talk a lot around the dinner table <laughs> Uh, you know, the graphs were very uh, verbose in German and uh, Steffi would then tell me what they were saying. So um, I probably speak a little bit of German. I speak a little bit of every language. I mean, you have to on, t t on the tour, right? Yeah. Um, so, so yes, I know how to say a few dirty words in German too. And I, well, I, I, let's not do that right now. Okay. No, no. But I, I do know how to tell you to shut up. So in German, but I will. Uh, halt, halt die Klappe. Halt die right? Klappe. It's my favorite yeah, but word. In... Only in Germany they say that. They don't say that in Austria. In Austria. Austria. Okay, there's how another you, one. How, how do you say shut up in Austrian? Halt den Mund. But that's halt dialect. Mund? Yeah. Hold your, hold, hold your mouth basically like go like this yeah mm. i mean there's other ways of saying it but i don't want to say that now so somebody uh, there's said, another there's another what, question yeah what do you think of coco stubsy do you think she will win a grand slam what do you reckon well look you know she's so young right now and i think she has so much incredible potential um, she's already proven herself to be a, a winner on the wta tour i believe she won Linz last year correct Yes, she did. Yep, she um, won. That was her first event. She won, and she won. She lost in the qualies, and then got a lucky loser and won the tournament. Um, so That's look, right. that in itself is really impressive. Obviously, we know the results that she's had over the last year and a quarter has been really tremendous. But mm. look, she definitely has some weaknesses that she's going to have to fix, and the serve is a problem. It's a weapon, but it's also a huge weakness <clears> in <throat> some respects. But she's yeah, sometimes... holding up. Sometimes with the second serve, she's going for it. Huh? It's almost like uh, Zverev sometimes. She's, she's just like, going... she's, she's lost her rhythm. She doesn't, I do not like her service motion. I do not like mm. the technique. I think there's a lot of work that she needs to do on the technique. Her forehand is also um, definitely technically not great. So there are things, see, this is the thing that people don't understand. It's one thing to do well one year, but then once yeah. everyone starts to figure out how to play you, and what That's you right. are. I mean, I think, you know, I hate to bring a name up because I'm working with her, but Jeannie Bouchard is a perfect example. I mean, what a year she had like six years ago um, mm. or whenever she it played, was. What, two semis or... Uh, I mean, two semis, a grand slams and a final. Yeah. Like, that's just crazy. Yeah. And, like, yeah. and it came so quickly. 
But the thing that people don't realize is that people in good coaching, they figure out how to beat you because they can see weaknesses. And so I think anyone that's teaching someone that's a young player, like a Coco, like the thing that I was a little bit mystified about was during COVID is that she didn't spend more time fixing those obvious flaws in her game. You know, like the service motion is discombobulated. The forehand is big and a dis- little bit discombobulated. And so her back end is unbelievable. And, yeah. you know, sound. her speed around the court is incredible. But, <clears throat> and her, f- I mean, listen, she has this, right? And she yeah, has this. She does. She is incredible. She's so mature on the court, isn't she? Oh, my God. Like, and, and I think that above everything is, you can't teach that. Like, no. the fact that she has that naturally, or not naturally, but she's really worked on it. That is unbelievable. So technically, if she gets the serve and the forehand right, can she win a slam? Absolutely. But she's got to she's got to fix those issues, and they and they are yeah. issues because everyone's going to pick on them, and everybody's yeah, too yeah. good now, Bubsy. I mean, you know this. Yeah. No, of course, solid. Absolutely. No, and, and even if you look at you know the the big guns, you know if it's a, a, a Serena, if it's a, a Federer, Nadal, they always work on their technique. They always try to improve. You never, you can, you, you've never. You never stop learning. You never stop improving as a tennis player. There's always something you can fix, and uh, um, and that's uh, um, and that's that, that's what you said. You know, that's what she has to do technically. There's a few little things she needs to get better at. And um, again, yeah, that second year is the hardest year. Like once you you get on the tour, nobody knows you. Nobody has figured you out, and then it's so much easier. Um, there's yeah. another question about uh, Dominic Team. How proud I am! I'm so proud. Excuse me. I'm Austrian. Unbelievable. He's uh, number three in the world now. He's uh, in the semis of uh, the ATP finals in um, in London. So that's amazing. And will he win Roland Garros before Rafa retires? Yes, he will. Come on, Dominic. I mean, how many more years is Rafa gonna play? It's really every year he wins it. I think. Okay, that's the last time. But surely that has to be the last time. And no then way. he just listen until he cannot walk. He, I said this before. You know, everyone picked Novak uh, at the French. I mean, you look at the list of all of my ESPN colleagues and who they pick. And I said until this guy cannot walk, he will win the French Open. Okay, there is nobody that can beat this guy on clay over five sets, especially Roland Garros. Yeah. And the fact that he won it this year. When the roof was closed, mm. okay, which definitely helped Novak, definitely, with the new balls, and he chopped. I mean, he. I mean, that is a, that is as comprehensive a win against someone like Novak as you're ever going to see. Yeah. So with all the well, changes, with all the changes to the court, I mean, you know what it's like. I mean, it was like me, right? When I I hated no playing. Crowd. I hated playing on my, I'm not comparing myself to either of these guys, but when I played Margaret Court Arena, for example, it's not because I don't like Margaret Court, but when I played Margaret Court Arena, for example, at the Australian Open, I hated that court. It used to be super windy and, you know, birds and shit flying everywhere. And then all of a sudden they put that roof on. I was like, oh my God, this is my favorite court in the whole world. Yeah, yeah. Because of the roof, you know, and some people like US Open was always windy and, you know, it's terrible. And then all of a sudden, boom, they put the roof on, no wind. So, Novak has never liked a lot of wind and sort of things like that. And so I thought, oh, they put the roof on, no wind, perfect conditions for him, a little bit heavier. And and he still, Novak yeah. still and what would a not final. Win. And what a final it was, Topsy. It was really, uh, it was mind-blowing. It was uh, un- unbelievable. And it seems like whenever he steps out there on the court, Rafa in, in, in Paris at all, else, he's just... His self confidence is even higher than yeah. any other event. He just he can't lose there, and he knows that, and that makes him just a little percent better uh, yeah. once again. So, so it's unbelievable. I think might, that- may I just yeah. add though? I was very happy, and I'm not Austrian. I am Australian. Um, how happy I was to see Dominic win because he deserved it. And and what a nice guy. What a nice guy. Yeah. He's such a humble guy, so down yeah. to earth. And uh, yeah. for him, it was uh, important to win the US Open because uh, he put so much pressure on himself. He's been in a few finals before. And he said if he wouldn't have won that final, then he would have uh, struggled mentally to bounce yeah, back because from that one. So it was not, he's not, it was not his best tennis. It was not Zvera's best no. tennis. They were both choking. They both knew how important it was. And yeah. uh, 
I think the right player deserved to win that match. Ciao, so Flavia. Happy. Flavia is watching us as well. Ciao, Fla. Ciao, Fla. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could add a third box so we'd put you I in I know, here. you can't. We can't. No, we, we can't. You know what? It's really funny. We're in quarantine here and all we do is we talk about tennis. It's crazy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, somebody asked me what it was like to face Steffi's forehand. Well, I actually did play oh. Steffi once. Did you play Steffi? Yeah, I played her three, four times. I was, uh, I was uh, star-shocked every time I played against her. Well, thankfully, I wasn't <laughs> star-shocked. It's called star-struck. But, star-struck, uh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because she and I were such good friends, and I used to hit with her so much. So for me, walking on the court was, I mean, I was still a little bit star-struck, but not as not as much as probably someone like you who grew up idolizing someone like her. Yeah. Right? Um, but Stephanie and I have, were such good friends from like 17, 18 years of age. So so when I played, it was kind of fun. It was just fun. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I actually get to play her. And I played her on a shitty grass court in Birmingham and she hadn't played in months. And I won the first set. No way you did not. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I, yeah. I envy you. Now, I'm jealous because I never won more than six games against her. Well, it was a crappy grass court and I was coming in like a banshee and she, you know, it was hard for her to pass me on her back end. So, yeah, yeah. But I'll tell you, speaking of her forehand, she passed me on an absolute ripper pass court, forehand cross court passing shot off a knife down the line <laughs> on match point to win the set, to win the match 6 4 in the third. Wow. Can you imagine? Good on you. Can you imagine That's... if I'd won that match? I mean, I would have oh loved my God, it. In. You would have scored a win against uh, Steph. Not, That's... not only would I have scored a win, but I would have rubbed it in her face for the rest Every... of my life. Yeah, exactly. I, you know what? I think her forehand was was fantastic, but her backhand slice was mm. so nasty. It was the meat. fastest backhand slice in women's tennis unbelievable you couldn't do anything on it really i mean except coming to the net which was not my specialty so that's why you took a, a set of her but i have a, a funny experience with steffi uh, so we played a few times uh, i've never won more than six games and at one time um we played an exhibition in germany so it was indoors really fast court i played a tournament on clay before just I don't know, lost or won the tournament. I can't remember and flew into oh, Germany. won the tournament. Yeah. I'm not sure. I can't remember. Um, and then I flew into Germany and, uh, and everything. And I, I didn't even have a hit. You know, I just made it there in time. And I see Steffi before and I said, Steffi, please take it easy. I've just played outdoors. I think I came from the States. You know, I'm jet lagged. I played on, on clay. Uh, let's just, you know, like take it easy. Maybe not too much pace. 616 love in 40 minutes. And I'm like, Good luck. Steffi, she said, I can't do that. You know, it's really hard for me to do that. I'm like, we're playing for the crowd, for crying out loud. And she just kicked my ass there big time. And I was like, this small afterwards. She oh, can't. Sorry. She can't play soft. No. I played, I played her in exhibitions and she can't. Oh, God. <laughs> no, no, she can't. She just can't. She can't relax. She can't just go, oh, it's 100 miles an hour. Um, yeah, God, what a, I just, you made me think about that. Oh God, can you imagine if I'd won that? I could have rubbed it, rubbed it in her face for the rest. Well, you can still rub that into a lot of other people's face that you actually won a set and you lost 6-4 in the third. Not a lot of people can true, say that. True, 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 true. All right, someone said uh, they forgot to ask me earlier, what are your thoughts on Simona winning another slam? I love her. She's my favorite. Well, first, a couple of things on this. There is nobody nicer than Simona Halep. She is such a sweetheart. Talk about humble. We are. We are. But, yeah. I mean, yes, we yeah. are. But <laughs> talk about humble. She is such a humble champion. Um, nicest uh, young lady in the world. And do I think she can win another slam? Yes, I think she can win another slam. If totally I had agree. to. I, I was a little. Um, I was, I was definitely shocked how easily she lost to Swedtech. And I know that Swedtech is a great player. But the thing that, you know, everyone's like, oh, she played too well that day, yada, yada. If you look back on the last four or five, well, particularly the last three or four games of that match at the French, Simona missed balls that she would never normally miss. Like just routine backhands, like in the net. I mean, the thing about playing Simona is that she grinds you 
down physically. Like you have to hit 50 good shots against her to win the point. And, you know, a lot of players, if they step up and really dominate and physically take control of the match, they can beat her. But, it, but that takes why did she miss? That's that's the question. Why did she miss? Because of the variety of Swantec, I think. I, I, I didn't think like that. I definitely think there was definitely a variety. But if you look at the last couple, look, you know, as a as a player, when you get up a set and a break or 4-1 or whatever against a great player, you know it's so far from over. Like you mm. can't celebrate until you are shaking hands, literally. Mm, mm. And I sensed uh, Swan Tech get a little tight at, I think, I uh, can't remember what it was, maybe 4-2 or 5-3. Th of course, what, what, yeah. Whatever it was. And I could, she, she, hit a, she hit a double fall and I was like, uh-oh. And you know as a champion, you're like, yeah. oh, she just got That's tight. That's the chance. I mean, Right, you just you know straight away. I mean, we could we could name ten matches off the top of our head where we yeah. saw yeah I momentum remember change. That now, and she missed a few uh, a few and a few easy ones. Simona. She just just when it was about to get tight and really yeah. get down to the nitty gritty of okay, if you want to win this match, you have to hit winners, and that's a yeah. whole different story. On especially yeah. on clay, yeah. you know this when you're yeah. playing against someone, it's like oh shit, they're not missing now, you know. She missed a ton at the yeah. end of that match. Yeah, she did. And but that... I still think I still think that she has a very good chance to win another a few other Grand Slam titles, especially with she's got a, an Aussie coach, Darren Cahill, who was in quarantine a couple of weeks ago in Adelaide. Yeah, <laughs> he was grinding through that one as well. She, she'll no. definitely be a threat at the Australian Open. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. someone's calling me. Sorry. What is going on? <laughs> no, that was just uh, my phone. My other phone. Ringing, uh, sorry. All right, let's go through some more <laughs> questions. How long? Somebody do you think... wants to marry me. I'm married already. Sorry, wow. you can't think... do that. Well, <laughs> uh, and I set them up pretty much. So no, yes, no. You did. Well, you helped a little bit. You gave us a little bit of a push, so yeah, I did. Josh, I gave, my husband I Josh, gave Josh a bit in. of a push. Mm. Yeah, you did. So stabs in. Was Josh, I invited uh... to the wedding? Yeah, but you didn't have time. Oh, okay. Because you were in, in, in Wimbledon. We got married um, 2000. Oh, yeah, I was still playing. Uh, yeah, you were still, you were probably in the finals of Wimbledon, and that was more important to you than what, just coming what year to our was wedding. It? 2007. Yeah, I was still playing. Um, yeah. All right, Steffi or Serena in their prime, who's better? Oof. I, I don't like those comparisons. Um, whew. Yeah, I mean, you can't, you can't compare them. Look, I know. Serena beat Steffi. Steffi beat Serena when they were playing. Um, yeah, they had different games. Um, I, I, I don't know. It was for me playing against Serena. She was just too powerful for me. The surf, especially. But then, then uh, also with Steffi, her athleticism, um, the slice. The, they were they were amazing in different ways. And um, I, I couldn't. I wouldn't be able to choose one who's hard, who was hard yeah. to play. Yeah, I like to. I'd like to put Serena and Steffi and Martina and Chrissy into a hat and just go -la -la, and pull one out and be like, yeah, that's fine. I'm good with that. You know, how, did you, like, how did you want to, what did you, what did you want to do if you put them in? -la -la -la, just roll them around and just pull one out and be like, yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Like, <laughs> you know, you think about, you think about Chris and Martina, they both won 18 grand slams at the, I mean, essentially at the same time, like they kind of negated each other. Like, 18 yes. times you know what I mean so yeah, they could have yeah. both won like 25 30 grand yeah. slams you know themselves so yeah you know and Steffi obviously um you know a lot of people talk about Monica and there's no question that for me you know what happened with Monica took away you know definitely a, a rivalry that could never yeah happen. yeah I mean yeah. the Steffi did you, Monica, did you play that year in Hamburg when it happened Yes, I not only played that year, I played doubles with Steffi there and we won the doubles and uh, I was standing there when Monica was stabbed. Oh was, my God. I was literally across the court from when it happened. So Monica was playing Maggie Maleva, who was the younger sister of Manuela Maleva and Katerina Maleva. Yeah. And I was standing next to Manuela Maleva on the courtside entrance to Hamburg. You know, when you walk down that little... Yeah, street. yeah, yeah. Still there. And I was standing at the gate watching the match and it was in the second set it was like three two or something like that in the second set and the sun was setting it was going behind the the stadium it was a beautiful night and I was talking to Manuela and we were watching the match and I heard that scream and I'll never forget it as long as I live and um 
I was standing next to the tour director, Lisa Grattan at the time, and she run, ran onto the court and she turned around and she said to me, go and get Madeline, who was the WTA trainer in the locker yeah. room. So I ran up the, this, up, up the chute into the locker room screaming, where is Madeline? And Arantxa Sanchez Vicario is lying down on the table like this. And she looks up and she's like, uh, uh like completely unaware of what was going on. And I ran back onto the court. Madeline had run on the court already. She'd seen it in the press room. And um, yeah, it was a day I'll never forget. Um, we didn't yeah. know at the time that she'd been, there was a knife involved. Um, yeah, yeah, there was. Because, but Yulia Maleva, who was sitting down the end of the court, could see exactly what happened. And she came into the WTA office and said the guy had a knife. And my mother yeah, and I was just like, just... what? So, yeah. you know. I mean, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, we will never find out how many Grand Slam, how many more Grand Slams Monica would have won. And it's, it's, um, it, it's horrible. Like, I, I get goosebumps when you told me the story. And I'm sure... This is something you'll you'll never forget. I mean, that stays no. with you as as you said. That scream, like when Mary Mary Pierce she ruptures yes. her her ACL. In, ACL in Linz. I will never forget when she was screaming. There's certain moments you just never forget, and that's oh, awful. yeah, that's it's a really day I'll awful. never forget. Uh, I know Steffi wanted to pull out of the tournament and just you know just not play. And you convinced her to play. Oh, what I said to her was, you can't have the world stop and you can't let something like this stop you from yeah. playing um yeah my th thinking was when i spoke to yeah. her was it's more at this present time with what's just happened you can't let people do stuff like this and stop the world y you have to keep going and um there's no question that she struggled with that decision um yeah. and she lost, oh, yeah. lost in the final to uh, arancha that year and then uh, we played the doubles final after that, and um, it was yeah, it was uh, it was it was a, just a, ter a terrible, 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 terrible moment in tennis's history. And you know, I knew Monica really pretty well. Um, we'd had a really interesting conversation like a couple of days before that event, and I just remember thinking I had this really weird vibe around her. Um, so yeah, it's um, definitely something in my past that. Yeah, it was tr tragic yeah. and terrible. Um, yeah. So uh, finishing on Monica, I will say that Monica and Steffi, um, Monica and Steffi and Serena and Martina and Chrissy, those five to me epitomise what champions are. I mean, nothing. Mm. They gave nothing for free. Mm. You know, mm. I've never seen one of them ever tank a point. You know, there are times, yeah. okay, yeah. Serena's, Serena's had some issues over the last couple of years with some issues, you know, I mean, what she did against Sakari at Cincinnati in the third set was like, what is going on? But, um, but you know, uh, up until some of these yeah. situations of late, I've never seen any of them give a match away. And that is yeah. just something that is, just doesn't come oh, up. That, that, that what impresses me the most uh, from, with, with all of those guys and also, you know, with Roger and Rafa, how do you set new goals over and over and over again? How do you have that drive? Because I remember, I mean, I don't want to talk about my career because it was nowhere near as that, uh, that successful. But when I've reached, you know, my goal was always to be top 10. And once I've reached that, it was very, I did, I did want to be top five, you know, but then it was kind of a little bit half-hearted. And um, I've, re I've worked so hard for that one goal that then I, that was it, you know, that's what I, I've reached everything basically. And for them, you know, they win the first Grand Slam, then they win, end up winning 20 Grand Slams and they can still, still have that drive and, um, you know, have, uh, have these goals and want to be better and want to go down in the history books, breaking one record after the other. I find that bloody amazing. I have to say. Yeah. To I think it. that, I think that, you know, when some, when people ask about those sorts of things, I just say, these players like Roger, Rafa, Martina, Chrissy, Serena, um, Steffi, they only come along so often. And the fact that you have Rafa and Roger and Novak, for example, in the same period of time with a little bit of gap between Novak and Roger, for example, it's phenomenal because they only come along so often because it is so yes. hard. As you said, those three guys in particular, and I, I put Serena in, in that category and Steffi, 
every time you walk onto the tennis court, you're supposed to win. Mm. That, that is pressure. pressure. That is yeah. pressure that you cannot imagine as a human being. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. and I think Roger has this amazing love for the game. And I think he just loves playing. And I think he loves the adulation, you know, and yeah. Yeah. he loves being Roger Federer, right? Rafa, on the other hand, just loves to compete. I mean, you see him practice. It practice is like, practice yeah. is harder. His practice is harder than 90% of the two are playing a match. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I totally agree. No, so he loves happen. grinding. He just loves that grind. Mm -hmm. And then Novak, he's a bit of both. Yeah. Like he loves the adulation, but he also wants to be the bad guy. And then he also loves the com competition. He loves and then, just yeah, and they and they push each other. They push each other to be a better player, and they've done that for the last ten years or even longer. And for us to be able to witness that is so special. We're like so lucky. We will tell our grandkids, you know, one day, um, you know, we we actually played. We've worked in this era and witnessed all of them and spoke to them, and uh, it's mm. pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, right. yeah Someone asked a great best, role model. Best hmm? one-handed backhand. Or any tips for improving one? Well. I'll answer oh, that. Well, you, I play a double hander, so it's, it's Bubsy. you, Bubsy. Uh, I've best got a racket here. Back end. I'm yeah. going to give a shout out to Carla. I've mm -hmm. got a racket Suarez. here. I can, you tell me what to do, what's important. I get what's, a racket. What's here? I've got a racket. Okay, well, you're, you're freezing on mine, so it's hard for me to tell you. But, so um, what's important? All right, well, let me get up and show you. Hold on. Let me get up and show you. That's uh, super important on a one-handed back end because you have a two-hander. I know. All right. I Hold on. So what's important on a one-handed backhand is with a two-handed backhand, you get to use the left hand, right, to hit the spin. Yeah. There's a one-hander, so often your grip is a bit stronger on a two-hander. You're a little bit like this, and then you can manipulate with the second hand, right? But with a one-hander, you've got to be a little bit further over, so you can keep that spin on the ball, right? So your grips are a little bit different. You're not as far I'll be back. You'll be back. Where are you going? Yeah, wait, hold on. I don't need you anyway. So what's important on a one-handed backhand is that when you hit it, that you actually, this left leg goes backwards, right? So you don't yeah. open up your hips like this. So let your back leg go back. And your left, your left hand, that has to go back as well like this, okay? So if you ever see Roger, when he hits that, he has that beautiful ballet move, movement like that. That's super important. So left hand back, right? With two hands, you use your left hand, but with your, as a one-hander, you want to actually push that back because that's super important to keep your balance. And it also keeps you side on. If you open But it's up, really hard. I think it's still very hard for a woman uh, to have an efficient uh, single-handed backhand and to, um, you know, be powerful with it. I, I don't know. I would never teach, um, I don't know, a kid a single-hander. <laughs> Okay, so here's the thing about if you want to teach a kid a single hander or whatever. Here, here's what's super important for women to know. You have to be really strong, okay? You have to have really good timing and you have to be strong. And, you know, like I'll, I'll give you an example. One player that has a two-handed back end that I th think would have had a really great one-handed back end and probably would have had a better back end, um, and don't take this the wrong way, my friend, but Sam Stozer. I think Sam would have been really good as a one-hander. And the reason I say that is because she's so strong and she has such quick hands with the forehand. Mm. I think she would have had the same I agree. Know, strength with the one-hander. The two-hander that she has is she uses the wrist too much. She doesn't yeah, do yeah. what you do, which is have that beautiful shoulder turn. Um, so in, I think um, her coach did a disservice to her by not getting her to hit a one-hander. Um, now, I say that having fact that Sam won a US Open. So she's had a bloody, uh, like, Hall of Fame career. So she, I'm, I'm not going to, like, I'm, I'm, it's not like I'm saying, oh, she would have been much better. But I do think... No, that, no. But, yeah, I agree. Because I feel also also her rotation would have been maybe a little bit better. I feel like she's blocking herself on the back end. But that's another story. You, you're working with her uh, during the Aussie summer. Is that right? Yes, I am. With Sam. Yes. yes. Very nice. 
Somebody yeah. said, where, Bubsy, where did you go? You're in a hotel quarantine. Yes, I am. I've just traveled from Europe to Australia. And when you enter Australia from anywhere in the world, you have to go in a two-week hotel quarantine where you cannot. And I say, you cannot leave your room. <laughs> Someone said they love Innsbruck. Now, I have a friend who's actually in Austria doing a little healthcare kick right now. So um, outside, oh, of, where? outside of uh, Salzburg, I think. Ah, okay. I'll have, cool. to, I'll have to look it up. I'll, 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 yeah, I'll, look it up. Let me know. You've got good. a bit of time in your hands, so you better do that. All right, all right. Don't rub it in. Um, yes. All right, let's go to some. Are you coaching both Sam and Jeannie? Yes, I'm ho still helping Jeannie, um, and I will be coaching Sam. So I'm kind of doing a little double duty there. Because hey, Serena, Sandra, I want to talk to you about something else. I don't want to talk about tennis just not not now unless we get. Um, okay, sorry one. everyone that's asked us a question. Bubsy wants to talk. No, to no, you. because I want to ask you because you're betting on horse racing, right? You've just started. Uh, what three days ago? How's it going? Have you made any money? Well, um, I am, my account is, um, check up. your account. Well, I think yeah. I sent it to you and I'm technically, uh, yeah. about $860. Woo. Cheers. Where's your glass of wine, by the way? Are you drinking? I was, I was on fire today. $823 is my account. I think, matey, I think you should pour yourself another glass of red wine. Come on. What are you, what are you having? Right, Shiraz or I'm having. You know, let me let me have a look. Hey, Bumsy, I got dressed today. I put shorts on and everything. Well, right. that's another thing. So when I spoke to Stubsy on day one of the quarantine, she said, "Oh, this is great. You know, I will never wash my hair. I will just leave my pajamas on. I'm not looking after myself." And I'm like, "What are you doing? You know, it doesn't matter if you're alone, stuck in a room. You still have to look after yourself. You know, you oh. have to get dressed." Yes, you have to brush your hair, you have to brush your teeth, you have to take showers. I hope you're taking showers. Look at me, I make, look, I washed yes. my hair today. Very good, then you make your bed. Have a look at my look, bed. Look, it's made. Look, I, made, I made my bed, I make my bed every day. Whoops, just for me you made that, just for our chat. You no, know, I did not, I've enough. been making my bed every day. I make my bed every day. All right, um, all right, I believe you. I I worked out today. I did have a shower and I washed my hair. So there you go. Um, Good. Well done. Uh, so do you make what, what helped me a lot going through getting through that quarantine is that I made myself a little schedule like a uh, daily routine, which uh, which really helped me getting to get you know, get through this. What about you? Did you just make yourself a little little routine? Not really. Just get up. <laughs> Do Somebody said you've won 382 since yesterday. Is that correct? <laughs> Is that a friend of yours, James? I don't James know. Andy. How did he know that? I don't know. I have no idea. That's hilarious. I don't know the people you know. I don't know. I know. So, I know. I know a few people, Bubsy. You know, <laughs> I know you know, we do. We both do all around yes. the world. That's why it's cool that we're doing this. We yeah, have. Yeah. Uh, is this on the top right? Is this the amount of people who are listening to us? Yes. <laughs> That's not a lot. <laughs> it's not a lot, but, but it's okay. That's all right. <laughs> um, listen, uh, I want to know what you're, the first thing you're going to do when you get out of quarantine. Oh, my God. I've got to give my son and my husband a big hug. Today I got a phone call, Stubsy, and I told you the other day that um, I will get out of quarantine midnight, Monday night, so from Monday to Tuesday. But they said I'm going to get out of here on a Monday at 7 a.m. in the morning. So um, it's really exciting. I was jumping up and down. I was head banging. I was like, yeah, this is great. So my boys are going to pick me up, and then I'm going to give them the biggest cuddle ever because I've been away for three months, which is uh, a long time, and I have never been away for that long ever. Oh, my God. Um, Josh must be dying. Well, both of them are dying because, I you hope, know... I I'm, hope you give Josh very, more than a cuddle. Uh, yes, I will. But, I mean, that's another story. Um, <laughs> Stubbs, in your life yesterday, you said you had won $500. I don't mean, know. Sometimes she gets a little confused with the money. So Listen, that's, you <laughs> know exactly how much I showed you yesterday. I know. I know. I have it here. I think I'm, not I'm not I'm not fibbing. No, I know. I can show you. So, so then, no. Yes, there, there it is. Eight twenty three ninety. That's US. I wonder dollars. how much you've. I wonder how much you've got left when you leave uh, quarantine. Here's Hopefully. here's here's what my goal is. My goal Tell is me. to win enough money by the time I'm out of quarantine, that I pay for my quarantine with my winnings. Ooh, 
that's a good uh, that's a good call because right? it's not uh, so my it's goal about three, is it's about to get, three grand isn't it well my goal is to get 2500 us on there and that'll pay for my quarantine pretty yeah. good right okay. I mean, good luck keep me up to date keep me up to date once i'm out and i'm i'm putting i'm sticking my toes into uh the white sand and the ocean okay well listen before we go uh so they said you can get out midnight no yes no at the beginning they said because the the 14 days would have finished monday midnight and now they said no i can leave monday morning so they said um that the fuck's uh, the seven o'clock seven o'clock well it's still it's almost uh i mean from seven o'clock until midnight it's a long time it's uh, what 18 hours or something so i'm quite happy or what is it 17 i don't know i can't really and um uh so they said that a police officer will knock on my door will help me with my luggage and then the procedure will be about 30 minutes until i can leave and then i'm going straight up to noosa so i'm in brisbane now i live in noosa heads so i'm gonna go up there and then probably just I don't know, just uh, jump in the ocean right away because it's a beautiful spot. As you know, Stubsy, you've been up there several times and I just want to, w- I'm just going to be glued to my boys because, um, again, I've been away for so long and it's so difficult to get into Australia. I'm not sure how difficult it was for you to get a flight from the States to Australia, but from Europe, it's nearly impossible. Yeah, well, the flights in the US weren't easy as well. And I will say that I paid a arm and a leg and yes, all of my toes and maybe even a couple of fingers to get on my flight, I tell you. Yeah, I bet no. Actually, that should be my goal is to win that much money on here so I can pay for my trip down here. Cause it was a you can reset your goals. You can reset your goals and you Thank can you. just try. Yeah, yeah try I will. To make- Look, this my, is good. Ma- my mother, my mother is, my mother is falling already two times. She tell her to, to just to tell her to relax, relax. Yes, relax. I, will. I um, will. I will. But right, yeah, so-, so in Europe, there's um, there's about thirty, thirty five thousand Australians who cannot get home because there's a cap on uh, in on each stage uh, stage yeah. which uh, how many people can can enter and uh, it's pretty sad actually what's going on so yeah it is terrible um, i mean honestly the australian government should do something about that i mean look i'm i shouldn't complain because i i could afford to buy that ticket and get on a plane but if i had to fly economy that, that's when people are getting bumped um so yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, if you can afford to pay and you know, if you really want to get home, it's, it may be worth paying the extra money and it could, it, it, it'll be the reason that you get home. But, um, yeah, but, um, uh, uh, Jenna Martins wants me to give her some tips for tomorrow. Here's my tips for you people. Okay. Um, bet on the favorites. Okay. Have some guts, bet on the favorites, watch the ta- watch the, Watch the what the bookies are doing. If the bookies are betting a horse down before the race starts, put your money on that, okay, and just believe in it. Then there's a little bit of time. There's one or two times where it's a, it's just a it's a, it's a feeling. For example, today you're gonna love this story, Bobsy. So as <laughs> I'm listening, know, Sam had a had a little her partner had a ba- a baby, and her name is Evie, and uh, there was a horse today. Um, and it's named called Evie. Evie something. I can't remember. It's, and I went, it's going to win. It's going to win. <laughs> and it won. <laughs> Here so we go. Sometimes you Evie. have to go with your intuition. Uh, and, 100%. 100%. Uh, yeah. Whatever that feeling is, immediately put your money on it. Put your money yes. on it. Or well, go Jenna, with Jenna, did you hear that? I hope you heard that. That's, uh, that's a good tip, Stubbsy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was another, there was another, that was the gambler. Yeah. There was another one I won on where uh, it was the name of my first dog and actually Sam's cat's name. And it was a combined horse's name. And I went, that's going to win. Oh, you know what's funny today? So I was looking at what this one race and there's a horse name, Fesmina. Okay, wait, <laughs> wait. Gets better. Gets better. I'm like, Vesmina. <laughs> Any time I've ever heard the word Vesnina was Elena Vesnina. Wait, it gets better. And it's parents' name. I can't remember the one name, but the other horse's name was Mesquina. <laughs> That's hilarious. 
Clearly they're from Russia. So, oh my God. The people that own these horses love <laughs> Russian tennis players. Yeah, clearly, clearly. So was, there a, was, there oh, a, was there a, was there a, was there a, was there a Kornikova as well? Must no, but I bet you there is a Kornikova. <laughs> I swear to God. So, of course, uh, I took a screenshot of it and I sent it to Viznina and I go, dude, look at this. And this is your look, horse? Look what its parents' name is. And she's like, oh my oh, God. My God, I go, yeah, so obviously somebody here in Australia has an affili- has a real yeah. thing for former yes. Russian female tennis, tennis players. Tennis players, that's interesting, isn't it? Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, and there was another horse today called <laughs> Celis. Oh, no. See, now, now you should stop drinking wine. No, <laughs> it's a true story. I'm not even drunk. <laughs> I want somebody out there, if they have... Well, actually, I am part owner of a racehorse that's going to race in February. But Ooh. if there's somebody out there that has a lot of racehorses that wants to name a horse, please, please name Please one. call it Stubsy. Please call it Stubsy. Come on. <laughs> Do me yeah, a favour. Yeah, there has to be a Stubsy. Why don't you, why don't you buy uh, a horse and you can call it Stubsy? No, no that's proper. wanky. Like, why no, no. Do- I want someone to start naming horses after Australian tennis players and I think Stubsy should be a, a name of a horse. It can be it can be combined with beer bottle and or beer and like you know shorts or something. You know, like the, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. So you could just whatever or or a short nose and a whatever Stubsy. Stubsy. You're losing it clearly. It's only day four in your quarantine. <laughs> I'm on day. I'm day eleven. I'm gonna get out of here soon. Oh my god! I can't wait. I can't wait. This is really tough, guys. Oh this is god, not easy. So no, this, don't this... pressure. Listen, you shut up. You get you the hearty clapper. You get thirty minutes outside. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> Stubby holder. <laughs> Somebody said that's a good one. Stubby holder. Do you want to talk more? How do you think Ash is going to go at the Aussie Open? She hasn't played anything. What was the uh, last uh, she's played? Was it? Uh, did she play anything after the Aussie Summer in 2020? No, she went to Indian Wales, but she didn't play. Yeah, so it's a so, long yeah. time away. She'll she's be fine. Are you kidding me? She went away for two years and played cricket and came back and went, got to number one in the world. She'll All right, fine. there you've got your answer back home. Ash Barty, you'll be fine. I'm really look, looking forward to... Um, uh, Bianca Andreescu coming back. Like, come on. Yes. How fun would a match between Andreescu and Svantec be? Come on. Yeah. Can you say those names again? Because I feel like you're struggling a little bit with pronouncing them. Bianca Andreescu? Yeah. <laughs> Andreescu. Yeah, Andreescu. <laughs> Sounds like she's rescuing somebody. And, and then it's, it's, it's uh, Svantec. Svantec, that's I what had, I said. Yeah. It's, Svantec. We used to say Svantec and it's Svantec. Schwantek. Schwantek. Yeah, Schwantek. Yeah, um, exactly. It's now on the WTA. They finally do it. Someone said, and they're off with Stubbsy in the lead with 100 to go. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's Stubbsy takes the lead. You know, hey, you know, my, you know what, what? My horse, if it's named Stubbsy, will dive at the end to win that race. That's when I would start putting money uh, on, on horses. I think if you, if there would be a horse called Stubbsy, I would just go. Yeah, I would go for it. I would start gambling as well because I don't drink, clearly. I don't gamble. It's crazy. Unbelievable. What's the, the roads I'm so I'm, boring. The roads I'm leading you down. <laughs> for so many years already. Somebody oh, said, somebody do you said... think it's Venus's last year on tour? Yes, I do. Well, she's always said she's going to retire with uh, when Serena retires now. So it depends a little bit. I think that Venus will be her last year. I think both Venus and Serena's last year will be this year. Yeah, good chance. Good chance. Yeah. Hopefully, tennis goes back to uh, a little bit more normal in uh, this year. And there's going to be more more tournaments. We'll, we'll see. It's been a pretty sad year, I have to say. I'm amazed that they actually got to play three Grand Slam events. But, uh, yeah, we need we need tournaments. We need tournaments to go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, someone said Babsy is much better name of a horse. Of course what? it is. <laughs> course what if it you is. had a Bubsy and Stubsy in the same race? There's Bubsy on the outside and Stubsy's coming up the inside. <laughs> and then you can Bubsy have a Dasher. Cool. Dasher Gavrilova, Somebody... but it's Dasher coming from behind. Yeah. Oh, well, you better watch out what you say. 
Well, she said that. Don't you remember my interview with her? I'm oh, like, yeah, you did. Like, she did say that. Yes, yeah. I do remember. That was a couple of years ago. No, yeah, a long yeah. time ago. Yeah, a few yeah. more years ago. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Stacey, anyway. I, right. I, have to, I have to go now. <laughs> okay. Well, you go. I don't know where you're going, but uh, choose. <laughs> no, I think, I think we've done an hour on the dot now, which is listen, pretty good. Listen, I'm going to let you go because I know you've got a lot of things to do in your room. <laughs> um, so, so, guys, everyone out there, Phil and Dunk, thank you so much for joining us. Um, uh, Renee, can I get a hello? Tried to meet you at Brisbane. Uh, love you commentating. Hello, Mel Plesh. Yes. Go. Hello. That's, that's the Norman. way. That's the way. Hey, Stabzi, I will give you a call tomorrow and check in on you, as yes. always. But yes. uh, I hope these 62 people who have watched us really enjoyed us. 65 yeah. now. 65. 60, um, 65. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. 63, because you just told them that you were leaving, so they all hung up. Uh, but thanks. And oh. uh, we will do it again. We will do it again before Bubsy leaves quarantine, so she can rub it okay. in my face. Okay, let's do it again. Yeah, right. let's do it. Well, I don't have too many days left. Huh? It has yeah, to be let's it. do it when you're leaving quarantine. Let's get a let's get a beat on how you're feeling. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. Exactly. You mean when I'm out of uh, when I'm out or when that no day I'm when you're the day you're leaving. Okay. Well, it's at seven a.m. in the morning. Do you want no, me to give you a I don't want you to call six? me at seven a.m. Oh, I'll be up at seven a.m. But you maybe six a.m. But people in Europe okay. will be up then, all right? People, uh, Stabzi and I, we're going to sort this out privately. Okay. Right, we're going to have to sort this out. <laughs> we're not going to fight on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. All right. Bye, everybody. I'm going to go off. Cheers. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>